for photons. Babita Diakaran was gunned down after she dropped off her child at school on a random August morning. Wherever I go, you go. Some of the last words uttered by Keenan Forbes, known professionally as AKA. The 35-year-old rapper was gunned down outside a restaurant on Farida Road in the Durban. The of Busasa and Gupta-owned Shiva Uranium, Kuta Murray, has died in hospital. He was shot while traveling with his son along the N1 highway in Yemitla. In 2022, GITOC recorded 141 assassinations in South Africa, an average of two or more a week which realistically is an undercount given the limited sources of data it deals with, the culture of targeted killings in the country both recently and historically has become a monetizable commodity that can be bought and sold with no discrimination on the who the intended target is. In today's video, we will be looking at part one of 10 recent high-profile killings that had occurred in South Africa, not ranking them in any particular order, looking into South Africa's as decent into the assassination nation. So let's jump into today's video, and please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more content like this. So let's get this started. Coming in at number 10, we will be looking at the unfortunate case of Babita Diakaran, who was a whistleblower at the Department of Health, who at the time was the acting chief director financial accounting officer at the Department of Health. Diakaran had been a key witness in a special investigating unit probe into a 850 million rand scandal at Tembisa Hospital. She had unwittingly discovered a vast extraction network that had been siphoning Tembisa Hospital's budget, which was spending hundreds of millions more than larger facilities. She had found 1,203 purchase orders out of Tembisa Hospital in a period of four months to various companies, which were valued at less than 500,000 rand, totaling 850 million rands in possibly fraudulent transactions. Interestingly, goods or services above that threshold require a public tender process, while those below that mark, the hospital CEO can sign off, who has since been suspended, pending a disciplinary hearing, as well as the CFO, various entities and high-ranking individuals have since been accused, implicated and are under investigation, with many of the entities being shell companies. The hospital was making much more orders than other larger hospitals, often for seemingly unnecessary items at inflated costs, with all of these transactions contributing to nearly one billion Ren being extracted from that facility. Unfortunately, three weeks after reporting the matter, Diakar and a single mother was killed on the 23rd of August 2021 in the morning outside her front gate while she was returning home from dropping her daughter off at school. A vehicle pulled alongside her vehicle and fired multiple shots after she had parked in front of her house in Johannesburg. After this targeted killing, a neighbor of hers informed the police that he had seen a suspicious BMW at the murder scene multiple times before her unfortunate death, which enabled the authorities to trace the vehicle and resulted in the arrest of six suspects, aged 24 to 30. These suspects, who all hail from the KwaZulu-Natal province, were allegedly paid 2 million rand and would later plead guilty in a plea deal, formally being charged for the murder and collectively being sentenced to 98 years in prison. The Sunday Times reported that Diakaran had been stalked and observed by her alleged assassins for more than a month prior to her death while also reporting that the CCTV cameras in the area had been mysteriously disabled prior to the assassination. The interesting part is that one of the suspects alleges that a prominent politician paid them 400,000 rand each for the hit, but later retracted the statement. The six men had also identified a man by the name Kaniasani Mpungos as the person who recruited them to carry out the killing. However, it is reported he died a few months after the death of Diakaran. Fast forward to 2023, and three of the nine Tembisa hospital officials who were allegedly involved in the awarding of possibly fraudulent contracts have resigned with the remaining six being suspended. While there has been no public statement towards who the mastermind behind it all might be, or if there are any leads, her assassination has also stirred a debate regarding the safety and policy around whistleblowing in South Africa, as they are essentially left on their own, putting their careers, safety, reputation, and life in danger, all for justice, where justice is not the topic of the day. 
Next on our list is the case of Clote and Thomas Murray, a father and son duo who had been killed earlier this year. Clote Murray was a well-known insolvency practitioner with over 20 years of experience in the field, who was known for investigating high-profile corruption cases, while his son Thomas Murray was a talented legal advisor at Sechaba Trust, a company which Clote Murray was one of the founders. Murray's job as a court-appointed company liquidator was to look into the accounts of firms that had folded, recover assets, and report any criminality. Recently, Claude Murray was appointed court liquidator of African Global Operations, formerly Basasa, a government contractor specializing in prison services which was implicated in numerous government contract scandals. The Zondo Commission into Corruption concluded that the company extensively bribed politicians and government officials to get government contracts. In addition to his work on the Basasa case, Murray was also a liquidator for Trillion Management Consulting, which was liquidated at the insistence of Eskom over its inability to repay the Peristatal 595 million rand, as well as working on the liquidation of Comair, the owner of Kalila and operator of British Airways in Southern Africa as of June last year, so it can be seen he was a very busy man. Unfortunately, the father and son duo were shot by hitmen on the N1 highway near Johannesburg while driving their white Toyota Prado. Thomas died on scene while his father died in hospital after succumbing to his injuries. The Murrays were followed by a car and a motorcycle from Pretoria to Johannesburg and were reportedly watched for hours before being gunned down. The aftermath of this suspected targeted killing is that both father and son have left behind their families. They had pursued justice and lost their lives in the pursuit of it. However, the non-profit organization Forensics for Justice has offered a 1 million rand reward for information that could lead to the arrest of the assailants. Meanwhile, the South African Restructuring and Insolvency Practitioners Association SARIPA, has called on the South African government to leave no stone unturned in finding the perpetrators and to ensure its members can perform their duties without fear, as reported by News24. The interesting thing is no one entity or group of individuals can be tied to the murders. As previously mentioned, Claude Murray had worked on various high-profile corruption cases, so at this point the matter is still under investigation. Next up is the unfortunate case of Kiernan Forbes better known as AKA or Super Mega to the Megacy. He was a South African rapper, record producer, and businessman. Being one of the most prominent South African artists of his era and one of the greatest selling South African hip hop artists of all time, winning several awards in South Africa while being celebrated internationally, recently being honored posthumously with the prestigious Global Visionary Award at the BET Awards, as well as many other awards. Unfortunately, Super Mega, along with his long Longtime friend, former business partner, and manager Tabello Tibbs Matsoane, an entertainment entrepreneur and chef, had been murdered on the 10th of February outside Wish Restaurant in Durban after the rapper shared his location on social media via Instagram stories. The rapper was scheduled to perform at Hugo Nightclub in Durban as part of his birthday celebrations, while Tibbs, according to sources close to him, say the two only called each other because they were both in the same city and wanted to catch up but before they knew it, they were murdered in cold blood. A source close to the situation says Tibbs was running late, but somehow he managed to find the rapper and his entourage there. At around 10 p.m. that night, AKA and his friends were standing outside the restaurant when an unknown gunman creeped up behind them and shot the rapper in the side of the head at close range. While his accomplice, who was standing by the rapper's car, fired more shots which killed Matsune, it is believed by the police that the second gunman then started firing to deter onlookers from responding to the hit. The two gunmen then fled the scene on foot. Sadly, AKA and Tibbs were pronounced dead at the scene, with the assassination sending shockwaves through South African and international media outlets and social media, with fans even speculating that one of his friends, Don Design, was in on the murder. Due to widespread backlash from the public regarding factors such as his body language caught on CCTV footage moments before the shooting, despite growing speculation by the public around Don's involvement in the double homicide, Super Mega's family has stood by the DJ's side, with the rapper's father, Tony Forbes, even saying that the accusations were very irresponsible and dangerous. However, However, fans also speculated that the father of the rapper's fiancée, Ainé Leitembe, 
who had passed away after she allegedly jumped from the balcony of Pepper Hotel in Cape Town two years ago after an altercation with the rapper. Although he claimed he had last seen her alive in the room, the speculation comes as her family had suspected that the rapper had pushed her off the balcony after a violent argument. However, after investigations in June 2022, the National Prosecuting Authority declined to prosecute the rapper. However, after the rapper's own passing, the case had been reopened after her family made further representations to the NPA via a letter convincing them that there was a possibility of foul play in events that led to their daughter's death, with contents of the letter claiming that the NPA disregarded the following crucial information in its decision. In a statement from a witness named Rob Stefanato who stated he heard an argument between a woman and a man coming from a K.A.'s hotel room. Before Nellie's fall, the witness claimed he overheard the woman desperately asking the attacker, a man, to leave her alone. A K.A. did not attend to his injured fiancée who remained alive for approximately 20 minutes. Stefanato administered CPR and called emergency services. AKA cleaned up the hotel room where blood was found on some towels. The rapper partied and drank at the hotel with his entourage following the passing of his fiance. Nellie's fingerprints were not found on the balustrade of the balcony, which would have indicated that she had climbed over the railing with the overall matter having mixed reviews from fans and the public. However, Ana Lay's father has asked South Africans to stop accusing him or his family of involvement in the late rapper's assassination, stating the accusations are damaging and have taken an emotional toll on him and his family. However, in an interesting twist of fate, a few months after Kiernan Forbes' passing, there is a claim that one of the murder suspects has been linked back to the rapper. Strangely, the suspect was also allegedly at the scene when the rapper's fiance passed away, according to a city press report. To date, no arrests have been made, although recently two men linked to the death of the rapper and his friend have been reportedly identified, and that the investigating team is building a strong case before any arrests are made. Recently, at the time of this video, it has been reported that the police have recovered the murder weapon, which was reportedly found in Amlazi south of Durban from a man in his 20s who was detained for the illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition, who is believed to have provided the police with information related to who he had purchased the firearm from. The case is still being investigated. However, the overall aftermath of this targeted killing is that a family has lost a son, a daughter, her father, while millions of fans across the globe have lost a devout pioneer of the game who greatly impacted the culture and was an influence to various artists and people.